Dax Carr was 25 years old when his life almost ended. Dax was very close with his father because they were both dedicated pilots. One afternoon, Dax and his father went to a field to go flying. The field was covered in propane gas. As his father turned on the plane, it exploded due to the propane. The explosion killed his father and left Dax with life-threatening injuries. His face and most of his body got burnt and he was unrecognizable. When the explosion happened, a farmer saw and immediately called for help. While waiting for help to arrive, the farmer tried to calm Dax down. Dax kept repeating, let me die. When help came, Dax kept telling the paramedics, let me die. Dax was in a lot of physical and mental pain. Dax didn't want to live and doctors would not listen. He was forced to undergo many painful treatments that caused him severe pain and the doctors and his mother would not let him die. I didn't want to live. It was just that I, I did not want to live in the pain and in the physical condition that I would have to live in. To every case, there is two sides. In Dax Coart's case, the two sides were Dax and his mother and his doctors. Both sides had a very good argument as to why they were doing what they were doing. Although Dax was in severe pain and requested to die, his doctors and his mother could not let him go if there was something that could be done to save him. Dax's mother already lost her husband and did not want to see her son die too. The, do the doctors saw a lot of hope in Dax and couldn't just give up. A doctor's job is to, is to save lives and that is exactly what the doctors were doing. Dax was in such bad shape that the doctors had to act quickly and they only wanted to give Dax the best possible treatment. On the opposite hand, Dax had a reason for wanting to die so badly. The severe burns that Dax received caused constant pain for him. He Im immediately was asking to die. He resisted treatments for 10 months but was still receiving them daily. These extremely painful procedures included chlorine baths, and constant replacement of wet to dry bandages, which Dax said felt like being skinned alive. Dax had virtually no skin, which made the process ag agonizing. He also was given limited painkillers and had his eyes and fingers removed. He was in so much pain that he just wanted to die, and he was also not allowed to communicate with anyone else, which made his experience even worse. In the end, Dax survived and was left without use of his hands or eyes. He came out with a video named Please Let Me Die. This case is widely known in medicine and bioethics. Death is viewed in many standards due to the situation. Doctors are there to help people and to save lives. But when it comes to a patient and their decisions, they should follow it because it is their body and their choice on how they want to live their life. Adding to the complexity of the issue, the Hippocratic Oath states do no harm which prevents doctors from purposely ending a patient's life due to their wishes. If you're living with chronic pain, should you have the right to end your life? Why you see this as a problem? Well, look, Mehmet, this is not a new debate. 2,000 years ago, Hippocrates addressed this. He didn't just say do no harm. He said do not administer drugs to end a person's life. Do not make it possible for that person to do so. Why? Number one, we have to be the reservoir of hope. We have to be on the side of prolonging life and instilling in people the will to live, no matter the degree of pain they're in. But people already have the right to end their lives. It's been constitutionally upheld. You can refuse any medical treatment that you want to refuse. Sadly, people take their lives by all different means. I'm talking about something different. Whether doctors should assist in terminally in ill patients committing suicide. Now, what's happened since the law has been in place, 2007, 525 people executed that right in Oregon. Dr. Bill Winslade, the Institute for the Medical Humanities at the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, says Cowart's appeals to refuse treatment, videotaped during this interview with psychiatrist Robert White in May of 1974, awakened people in law and medicine to a new issue. And this video was shown all over the country in medical schools and law schools because we were all struggling with what do you do with a patient who doesn't want to get the treatment that the doctors are recommending. Dax's mother Ada sided with doctors. She told the makers of a documentary called Dax's Case that she had additional concerns that he not die. There had been further medical disputes similar to Dax's afterwards.
One included Tony Nicholson, who was a patient in the UK who suffered from a stroke and became paralyzed from the neck down. He described it as a living nightmare, and he wanted to die. No further legislation has come out from Dax's case. Euthanasia is illegal in all states of the U.S. Physicians Aid in Dying, also known as PAD, is legal in Washington, Oregon, Montana, and Vermont. The difference between euthanasia is it's administrated by a third party, as in a PAD, it is administrated by a patient.